Hello guys, Deuteran slash Learn Swain here and welcome to episode 5 of the Commando 32 tutorial series where I will be showing you more advanced loops and if statements. So this was our previous program from the last episode. I'm just going to basically delete everything here. And today we're going to make a little program that takes in a number and counts to zero. So until new input can also do this for example. That's just a much more compact way of just doing nothing while we wait for new input. Oops. We're gonna turn lamp on the lamp 2 on and it's gonna stay on till we get new input and then it's gonna turn off when we do get input from the user. And we're gonna make a variable, we're gonna call it current, that's going to be our current value that we are counting at. So this is the number we're going to start at and we're going to count down to zero. So how are we going to do that? Um, until current is equal to zero, we are going to count down. Simple enough. So current will equal current minus one. So current, if current was say five, we're gonna set it to five minus one, which would be four. And if it were four, four minus one, which would be three, and so forth. By the way, a shorter way of doing this would be current minus minus. This is basically a shortcut. You can also do minus equals 1, or minus equals 5 to de decrement it by 5, but don't worry about that if you don't know what it is. Another thing with this kind of function is you can't actually use variables here. It has to be a static number. This is for complicated reasons. So if you don't know what it is, it's best to use this, though it is slower, both to type and for the computer to run. So, um, yeah. And of course, because this isn't going to do much interesting things that the user can't see what's going on. We're going to print out the current value while this loop is going. So this is pretty simple to understand, I guess. It's not that complicated. Um, so let's upload it. Another thing I keep forgetting to mention is that uh, this number over here tells you how much program space you're using. If that hits 100%, you uh, you have to make your program smaller somehow, because <laughs> it's not going to fit in the computer. It also indicates how long it's going to take to upload. So did I reset it? I did. Well, I just reset it again. Okay. So there we go. Lamp on two. It's going to wait for a number. We're going to enter five. And now what it's going to do is it's going to go 5, subtract 1. So it's going to print out 5 first, then it's going to subtract 1. Then it's going to print it out again because it's in a loop. And then it's going to subtract 1 again. Is it equal to 0? No. Print it out again. Subtract 1. Is it equal to 0? No. And it's going to keep going until it eventually, of course, equals 0. So I'm just going to keep this open and there we go now it didn't print out the last one because simply it was alright print out 1 1 equals 1 minus 1 that will equal 0 then it goes here it's equal to 0 stop going so it never actually prints it out the last time so if you want to do that you can print current or you can just print out 0 it'll do exactly the same thing because of course this loop will only exit when it is zero so we know it's guaranteedly zero so it doesn't matter I'm gonna go here alright so that's pretty cool but uh, what if the user enters a negative number it'll never equal zero so it'll just go on forever and it's just gonna keep subtracting one it's gonna be minus two that's not zero minus three that's not zero minus four that's not zero, negative five, negative six, negative seven, and it's just gonna keep going on 
theoretically for every bit it will actually eventually stop because of how overflow works but because this computer is so slow it will take ages now there's a solution to this and that's for example to go if current is uh, we can go while current is larger than zero so if it's negative then this loop will actually never run but we're gonna do something a bit more interesting we're going to make this program be able to count up and down. So what we're going to basically need is a variable called direction. And this will basically indicate which direction we're counting, whether we're counting up or counting down. Now, by default, direction will be minus 1, which is to count down. And what we're going to do is we're going to add direction. So this program, if I were to upload it, I'm not going to but it would do exactly the same thing. It's going to, uh, well, because direction is always going to be minus one because we only set it in one place. It's going to go current equals current plus negative one, which would mean if current were four and we add negative one, it's going to become three. So it's going to count down. If we were to make this one, it would go current plus one. And therefore, if, it were, if current were four, current 4 plus 1 equals 5 so it would count up so yeah if this is minus 1 the program will still count down as it usually does now what we're going to do is we're going to check if the number that the user gives is below 0 we're going to count up towards 0 so that's pretty simple to do it's actually really simple to understand if you know how loops work if current which is the number we take in as input is uh, less than zero and as you would expect the code between these two parentheses or brackets whatever you want to call them this code will run only if this is true if you want to do it if this is false if current is therefore larger than or equal to zero you are gonna do if not which is pretty much like how until and while are opposites if and if not is opposites. There is no actual not larger than or larger than or equal to things. This programming language does not actually support those at the moment. I might add those at later stages. But at the moment, because of how it works, that's not supported. So yes, if current is less than zero, we're going to swap our direction and we're going to make it 1. Now this is actually a little confusing. So what we're going to do is we're going to add comments to make our code a little easier to read. We're going to do that by typing double slash and we're going to say by default count down count if I can spell count up if less than zero. So basically, everything past these double slashes is ignored by the compiler. It does not care what's after the slashes. You can write whatever you want. It's not going to complain. It's not going to give an error, and so forth. And after you push enter, everything after that is well taken in by the compiler. If you want to do multiple lines, you can do slash star. And then you can type your stuff here and then end with star slash. So that's how you make multi line comments. Because if you do that with this, as you can see, it'll only actually ignore the first line. So that's some advice, some good programming advice to add comments to your code so you know what you're doing when you're reading it later. So um, I'm going to go upload this code and see what it does. Uh oh, I actually have a problem in my code. Yeah, this is something I actually haven't mentioned in my previous episodes unless I edited that in. Uh, your compiler will give you a little error like this if something is wrong with your code, and it will try to be as useful as possible. This line number is super useful, for example. Usually it's like a spelling mistake or you're just following the syntax wrong. It will try. It will try to tell you what it thinks is wrong to try and help but sometimes it's it doesn't actually know what's wrong 
But uh, yeah, this line number is almost always right. It's uh, usually the line before or after it. So line 17, expected variable or number, found direction with two R's. We simply misspelled the variable name, as you can see, because of how my mic's placed in front of my keyboard. I can't see my letters, and I can't really reach them properly either. <laughs> yes, I'm blaming my mic for everything. But yes. And if you want to check if there's a problem with your code without uploading, you just use verify syntax. So if this error was still here, it won't actually upload. So that's nice to do if you're going to... Oops, I still made that mistake. If you want to check your problem without actually uploading it. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Like that. Because now I just messed it up, and if I open it, it's going to upload halfway. So that's why you should use Verify when you're not actually prepared to upload anything. You know, you're expecting it to be wrong or something. So yeah, let me try that again. Okay, let's turn off the computer. Turn it back on. And now we need to enter a number. So we're going to enter... We're still going to see if the normal mode works. So we're going to enter 5 again. I'm just going to turn off. And then after a while, because now it's going to have to check this if statement, set the direction, and all sorts of things called initialization, which is stuff that happens before the program runs properly. Just a fancy word for the day. And there we go, counts from 5, 4, 3, and it's going to be a little slow. I'll show you how to make your programs faster in a later episode, by the way, because the programs I'm making right now are basically designed to be as easy to read as possible. They're not actually well designed for speed, and that's basically what the high-level language is as well. It's designed to be easy to use, not focus on speed. If you want speed, you're going to need to use assembly which I will show you in a much later episode if I continue this series for that long. So yes, 543210 per perfectly, and it printed out zero, because I don't think I tested that when I added that feature. But yes, um, we're not going to upload it again. We're going to run it again. This time we're going to give it a negative number, perhaps a smaller one, negative 3. And it's going to take the input. It's going to initialize some stuff. And this time the if statement is going to be true because this is less than 3 or less than 0, sorry and therefore our count will be the other way around and there you can see it is counting up as opposed to down it's going to be negative 1 it's going to print out 0 wait for it and there we go hooray so yes, our program worked. Um, yeah, you can use this to for whatever you want. If statements don't have to do compare operations, just like loops, you can use compare operations like uh, the flags. I mean, so you can use, you know, if new inputs. If you want to do that, some for some reason, if random, which has a fifty percent chance of being true, which can be useful, I can imagine random chance of something happening. Uh, yeah, These are some stuff you don't need to worry about. You can check if the buttons or the levers are down. So if button A, that will basically run the code in the brackets when button A has been pressed, or lever A, lever X, lever X Y, or Z. Um, yeah, I think that's everything for this episode. You can use this for whatever you want. You can make this program or make a cool program. I can't give an example right now, but uh, I'm sure you can think of something cool. Uh, in the next episode, we'll be using the GPU. This really big defining rectangle over here. We're going to start with some basic GPU commands, and then in the episode after that, we're going to do some more advanced things. And I might need a couple episodes for the GPU because it's got some, got quite a lot of features. So uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. 
and um, bye.